thank you for giving us some time. We were discussing this yesterday. Uh, we had some tough comments about you. I want to give you a chance to respond. Let me just put it this way. Is there anything about this Meet the Press interview you would like to either take back or clarify today on the air? Yeah, look, there's a lot I'd like to clarify, but, but let me start by just saying something I think you will fully understand. I don't think I realized till after Sunday's Meet the Press how big a threat my candidacy is to the Washington establishment. I mean, think about think about that show. I, I go into the show and I'm hit first with, if you tell the truth about President Obama having more food stamps than any president in history, uh, you're a racist. And then I'm told uh, later in the panel discussion with A.J. Dionne that if you even mention Detroit, you're a racist. We then pivot and they come up with an 18-year-old tape about a Hillary care and ask me if that doesn't prove I'm for Obamacare. And finally, they asked me a totally loaded question, which, which, which I probably should have just stepped back from and answered totally differently. And they said, if you were in a position where you had to vote yes or no on something the American people did not want, would you ram it through? Now, we had just been through Obama doing precisely that with Obamacare. And, you know, and so I suddenly find myself have, having spent two and a half years fighting against Obamacare from the Center for Health Transformation, which I founded to help migrate us to a center-right, personally-oriented, market-oriented system. Uh, with everything I've said for two and a half years opposing Obamacare, suddenly by late Sunday afternoon, people are confused about where I stand. I then turn, and with Paul Ryan, who I have praised, I've written newsletters about, I have talked about his budget, I have said it was courageous, I've said that, that it was a tremendous step in the right direction. Suddenly I'm supposed to be, as the Wall Street Journal points out this morning, telling House Republicans to drop dead. Now, that's just plain baloney. What I said was, we need to go slow, or, or maybe I should have expanded on, if David Baker gave me the time, we need to go slowly and carefully. We need to listen to the American people. And when you're going to reform something as big and as important as Medicare, you need to have the American people understand it, you need to have them approve it, and you may need to actually modify it and fix it as they tell you what they don't think works. Now, when we did welfare reform, as you'll remember, which is the largest entitlement reform in your lifetime, we had 92% support by the time the bill passed. We got half the Democrats to vote for it because we'd been so thorough and so exhaustive. The country got it. They understood it. And, all I'm, and I was saying in reaction to a very narrow question. I mean, I am totally for what Paul Ryan is trying to do in general terms. I'm actually for more change over the next 10 years than this budget's the beginning stage of the scale of change we need. And yet somehow in the Washington elites, that becomes almost a caricature of everything I've done in my entire career. I guess, Newt, uh, let me just, I, I want to give you most of the time, but when you say you're totally for what Paul Ryan uh, is for and the Washington elites, that's not what I heard. Maybe I'm part of the Washington elite. That's not what the Journal heard. That's not what Krauthammer heard. It's not what Rush heard. It's not what Mark Levin heard. Uh, that's not what the listeners to this show heard. We heard you equate Paul Ryan's plan to Obama's plan, right-wing social engineering versus left-wing social engineering. Why the hit on Ryan? It was clearly and unambiguously a criticism of Ryan. That's not a criticism of Ryan as a person. It's Not a as a person, as a plan, it, 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 as a plan. It is a, it is a criticism. What I said was, you shouldn't impose radical change. He's not imposing I'm, radical change. How's okay. he imposing it? He can't impose it. We don't know if right. the Senate or the White House. Okay, so since he can't, then you can say that we can all relax because he can't do it. No, but, but I, was, does I it? was asked the question, okay. would you do that? Now, the question I was asked was, I wasn't asked the question where I stood in line. I was asked the question, should the Republicans pass a plan that is unpopular? Now, that's Let, what I was asked. Let, let's play the tape. Play number one, Claude. Do you think that Republicans ought to buck the public opposition and really move forward to completely change Medicare, turn it into a voucher program where you give seniors yeah. some premium support and so that they can go out and buy private insurance? I don't think right-wing social engineering is any more desirable than left-wing social engineering. I don't think imposing radical change from the right or the left is a very good way for a free society to operate. I think we need a national conversation to get to a better Medicare system with more choices for seniors. Why characterize the Ryan plan as right-wing social engineering and call for a national conversation when we're in the middle of a national conversation? Well, to the degree 
that we're in the middle of a national conversation, and the plan is open to change. And our goal is to move forward and modify and improve the plan as opposed to either sell it or pass it. I'm for it. No one, no one, Newt, no one took away from your comments on Meet the Press that you were for it. No one. Left, right, no one. Well, as I just said, I am for the process of improving it. I didn't say I was for the plan as it currently exists. Okay. Um, and, and, I'm, I'm, and I think that's an important distinction, Bill. Well, um, all right. I, I, don't think, I don't think the job of House Republicans is only to sell the current plan. No, I, I think the job of House Republicans is to say, this is the right scale of solution we need for the country. How do we improve this, and how do we get it to be acceptable, and what is it you, the American people, need to know about this? Do you... So that when it does pass, you will be glad it passed, and you'll be, hel- and you'll be helping implement it. Do you think, from the plain meaning of words, it was unfair to characterize what you said as an explicit and implicit criticism of Paul Ryan's plan? Uh, It's it's an explicit criticism of the idea of of moving forward without being willing to openly modify the plan in significant ways. You equated. And that's all I'm saying. You equated Ryan's plan on the right to Obama's plan on the left. What the journal said and what I said yesterday is we're in the middle of this fight. We're in the middle of this debate. Ryan's in the fight of his life. And you're shooting at him from behind, saying this is just right-wing Obamaism. This is what I think I really think rankles people. Right-wing, I don't think it's right-wing Obamaism. Well, it's but right-wing my, my social look, engineering was your phrase. Even worse. If, look, if it's imposed on the country, which was the context of the conversation, <laughs> right. okay, which Obamaism was. Yeah, it was, but there's not a chance Ryan's can be. It can't be. Okay. He's trying to persuade people. I mean, don't you think, I mean, you're a brilliant man, you're an intellectual, the distinctions between the kind of fight that Paul Ryan is in, what he has to do to get this thing passed, compared to what Obama did, which was shut off all debate. Ryan's got to go all around the hustings, and everybody's wondering why you why you shot at him. I am, I am very worried that we end up trying to pass something that has not yet been thoroughly understood, has not yet been thoroughly developed, and that is, in fact, at the center for many, many Americans of their lives. Yeah. And, and, and if you go back and look, for example, at the 1948 campaign, where Truman picked up on the Republican Congress, and suddenly the issue was no longer Harry Truman, I, I just think we have to be careful. Okay. Uh, we, uh, and, you know, we got to go. I, we're, I, at, we're out of time. We're out of time. Right. Can you stay another segment? I'll, yeah, I think I can stay one more segment, Bill. All right, it'd be great, because we'd, we'd love to hear more from you. Thank you. Newt Gingrich thinks he can stay another segment. Check with the schedule. He's got a busy one. We'll understand if he can't, but we sure hope he can. Stay with us. It's Morning in America. General C stays with us for another segment. Busy day in Iowa. Newt, let's see if there's maybe a way out of this. I was with a guy Saturday night. I have a, some advice for you, too, if you want to hear it. But I, I was with a supporter of yours Saturday night who said he supported you for president. He wrote me this morning, and he said, in anticipation of the inevitable Democrat ads, I would plead with Newt if he would make a video right now which he states unequivocally that the Ryan plan is not radical or right-wing engineering and that he has it would adopt the Ryan plan as his own with small modifications. Well, I think, I, look, I think there's something to that, and I think we can do a, a clarifying ad or a clarifying video that, that talks about the Ryan plan as such. But I do think people, I, I don't think you can, you can kid the American people, Bill, Right. This is, this That's is a right. Very, this is a very powerful, very dramatic reform of how we've dealt with Medicare. And it has to be approached. This, this isn't some minor thing. This would be the largest change we have made in government in our lifetime from 
in terms of moving back towards individual liberty and moving back towards individual responsibility. Do, do and you? That, and, that, and that's and I'm and I'm happy to 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 do something that's totally supportive. I, I did uh, something earlier uh, this week that we released in which I supported the Ryan budget in general, and I supported Paul Ryan in general. I did that Monday morning. Yeah. Uh, and, because I do like Paul Ryan, and I do think he's very courageous and very smart. And you said on this show in April, he's setting the standards for conservatism in the future. You had you had nothing but praise, which is why, again, we were so surprised yeah. at this. My, my advice, and you know, you and I have been around yeah. a while, Experienced war horses here. You're running for president. I'm <laughs> right. certainly not. We've been on Meet the Press too. I've been on it 30 times. You've probably been on it 50 or 100 times. Uh, 30. It's only 35. You see, almost equal. You know what they're going to do. I mean, you know, you're not a political knife. You you know what they're going to do. Uh, my advice to you to salvage your candidacy is to say, I blew it. I just misspoke. I people misunderstood me because I misspoke. I said the wrong words and I'm sorry and put this thing behind you. I think that's your only shot or I think you are done, Newt. I honestly do. You've got to deal with this because it's not it's not working. What you're doing is not working. Well I, I look I think that's honest advice and it's it, it you know I I think the the words I used were too strong and I and I think that actually this, this interview has helped a little bit to understand better what you were hearing, which is which isn't what I was saying. I was not equating Paul Ryan in any way personally with Obama, but I can I can see how that could have been. No, the, the political moral equivalence, not left wing social engineering, not right wing social engineering. That's. That's what everybody heard. And, again, it's not just what left-wingers heard. This is what your friends, many of your supporters, people who want to vote for you heard. And that's the part you got to you got to fix. You also, I think, well, well I'm gonna, then I'll shut up. we got several doctors calling this morning and wanted to know what you meant about the variation when you said a variation of the individual mandate. Oh, well, I, 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 I said that all of that ought to be dealt with at the state level, not at the federal level. And it's, and it's not a question of mandates. It's a question about how do we find responsibility for people today who've been taught that you can walk into the emergency room or you can and walk into the doctor's office and not pay your bills. We, we have more unpaid bills relating to health care than any other activity because people have learned a kind of total irresponsibility. And I'm, I'm, I, I do not believe in and have not supported an insurance mandate, but I have supported the idea that we have to somehow reestablish the principle that you ought to pay for things you use. Okay. Have you talked to Paul Ryan? Uh, we've been swapping emails, and I'm, I've got a call in to him today. Good. I think it would be a good idea. No, my, my, my goal is to help the House Republicans. Yeah. I, you know, I've spent 33 years of my life trying to help create and sustain a House Republican majority. Uh, nope. and, and I'm deeply committed to their being able to both have very large reforms and have them be popular and successful with the American people. No one forgets what you have done for the Republican Party. You take a man in the totality of his acts, and, and you have done much to advance the cause. But you didn't on Sunday, and I think you need to acknowledge it. And yep. that's I the best that's advice I can give you. Love All right, Newt, thanks for coming on. We appreciate your coming on. Thank Talk you very much. Bye-bye.